The booze was like pastels to Parker's fantasy, coloring in the details of that illusion. But the alcohol only sharpened Alyssa's thoughts so that her words came out pointed in black and white, shaking him back to reality. All of this time I am wondering why did you really come here, Mr. Parker? She bent over, reached into the bag, pulled out a pack of smokes and a lighter before continuing. What did you think would happen? I came here for lunch, he said. I guess I didn't count on getting drunk. Alyssa was no longer the seductress. Getting drunk has nothing to do with it. So we shouldn't assume that you are not just another horny man who wants to work himself into one of our hearts and maybe into one of our beds? That's enough, Alyssa, Marie protested. Parker leaned forward and tapped his pointed index finger on the tabletop. You invited me here, Alyssa. I could question your motives, too. There was no reason to do so. Parker had pretty much figured her out. Guys like him were just sport to Alyssa, small peaks to hone her skills on. The first night at the ski club meeting, Alyssa had been searching him out, looking for the right route to climb. That day, the moment he entered the locker room, she began the ascent, wiring her movements to get to the top to conquer his ego and make him want her more than anything else in the world. Alyssa's telltale grin confirmed as much. It was the look of someone who breathed rare air. No doubt Alyssa could only be with someone who shared her sense of self-worth. She could only love a blue blood, her Everest. Alyssa's phone dinged loudly. She snatched it from the table and perused the incoming text. Parker turned to Marie. I just thought it'd be fun to hang out, have lunch and get to know you both, he said less than honestly. Besides, you girls invited me. Marie glanced down, hiding a strange, sympathetic frown. Alyssa set the phone back on the table and looked up. Parker, she confessed. We didn't invite you. The wooden floorboards creaked loudly, pressed by the weight of heavy boots. Someone had entered the room behind Parker, and that harrowing sense of apprehension he'd felt previously returned. Turning to look, Parker saw a grim, unshaven, and yet familiar face.